Warriors. We just finished watching John Wick. I still can't believe it. This is spoilers. So I'm going in. Like I'm jumping in at the deep end. So if you haven't watched the movie. You don't want to know about spoilers. Please. Pause the video. Go watch the movie. Then come back. So I do not want to spoil this for anyone that has not watched it. So we're going to set the mood for this spoiler part of the review. And I'm going to say the big spoiler of the ending of the movie in 3, 2, 1. Spoilers, massive, massive spoilers coming up. So if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're still watching, man, please. If you have watched it, don't be watching right now. Go watch the movie first. Big spoiler. Ending of the movie. John Wick dies. Oh, man. You know what? Normally, I would be kind of salty if he died, you know. But it was done so well. That... I don't feel like it was like a Dexter type of kill where they killed him just because he's killed so many people and he has to die because he has to die. They just kill him in the dumbest way possible. This wasn't that. He died a free man and he got killed by Donnie Yen. Kane. Of all the characters in the movie, that is the only character that is worthy to, to kill John Wick. And even you saw it. He was like, and he kept saying, my brother, I'm sorry. Um, I owe you. You owe me. You know. It was just, a uh, Man. I'm gonna admit I wasn't salty at all that he died, man. I wasn't. I, I was. I'm sad. I was. I was in bits when in the when I saw that happen. Cause I knew he died. I knew it. There's no um, kind of grey area, you know. Or did he die? Didn't he die? Is it like a like the Batman movie, the Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale one, where they make he dies, but then you see him in the the um the true ending after everything. I see he he is with Selena, and they are just living their best life. This wasn't that he died. John Wick is dead, but he did it. It was done well. Man. And then after the credits, you see Kane, Donnie Yen's character, he gets killed by the daughter of the what I think is I think it's called Concierge, the manager of the the Osaka branch, right? And yeah. Like, she kills him in the after credits ending. And the cinema was packed when I watched it. And it was... I watched it early, by the way. But then everybody just... Left during the credit. The whole cinema... Empty. During the credits. There was only, like, two people behind me. That I only heard... I didn't even hear them, basically. I was in my own kind of world. But then I heard them, and I turned around, and I saw there was two people there. Right? But they were like me, just on their phone, taking in the moment. They ain't got nothing to do for the rest of the day. So they're in no rush. And then after the credit scene happens, you're like, oh, wow, okay. And then you see Donnie Yen, he's a free man. He's been freed from the assassin's world. And he's got flowers and he's happy and he's going to go see his daughter because now he finally can because he's not putting her in danger. He's a free man. And then the daughter of the manager of Osaka comes. And as you see her just go, ching, she pulls out her knife. And then the screen just goes dark. And you know that she's killed him. 
Like, man. What a movie, bro. What a movie. And a movie starts off like John Wick is full. Baba Yaga in this movie. There is no mercy in this dude. He's not on the back foot. He is on the front foot. The whole movie. He is the devil in this movie. El Diablo Loco. In, from the beginning of the film. But he is the crazy devil. But he's still... His acting, there's, there's, like, there's extreme violence, but he's got, his eyes have got sorrow. Like the acting man, Keanu Reeves, bro. Without this man, this movie won't work. I love this movie. This is a movie that did not betray itself. It did not betray its world. It didn't betray its character. What genre it was in, what its meaning is, it didn't betray a damn thing. There was no character assassination in this movie. From the first movie to the... To, this is the final movie. This is the end of John Wick. And they ended it properly. They didn't flog a dead horse. They didn't stretch it out as long as more than it needed to, to. This movie had no... Fillers. There was not one wasted scene in this movie. Every single character had meaning. What is this? What kind of movie are we watching? That's two movies that we've had like this now. Top Gun and now John Wick. Proper movies. We've been so starved of movies like this. Because, like, you know, we've got so many Marvel movies and DC movies and superhero movies that these kind of movies just don't exist anymore, man. You know, we're getting all these dumbass movies like Shazam and Black Adam, all this garbage and... Ant-Man, Quantumania, although I will say, Kang, in the Ant-Man movie, the, the, the um, Quantumania, new movie, 2023, his character was godlike. But the film was, he just didn't match the film. He didn't match the film. That move, that film was not for Kang. That is not the movie you should have put Kang in. The, he did not match anything in that film. The character was so good. And the acting of that character, he didn't fit. He didn't fit, man. But, you know, you know what I'm saying when I say these type of movies, like all these superhero movies, it's oversaturated. And they're putting out so many of them. And we're getting quantity over quality with movies these days and superhero movies. You know, and we are just getting hit left and right and centre. Then we, when we do get hit with a movie that is based in the real world, let's take, for example, say, Fast and Furious movies. Those movies are so far detached from reality it is ridiculous they have completely untethered themselves completely untethered from reality that it's like you're watching uh, it's like you're watching a like bodega superheroes you know pound shop superheroes 7-eleven superheroes cost cutter and um, superheroes you know the 5p beans superheroes right so even when you do get a movie that's not superheroes it is superheroes but they're just like the cheap versions they're the knockoff versions right so where do we go we get john wick we get top gun maverick oh thank goodness for these movies john wick man what a movie amazing music Amazing visuals, 
scenes that they go all over the world and even though they go all over the world they go to the Sahara they go to Berlin they go to France they go to New York they go all over the place every single place they go means something the colors the lighting every single place they go to every country they go to it's like it has a it's like it has like a a color to it there are unique colors that you'll see only in certain colors you go to japan and it's kind of got like a like a greenish red pink dark vibe then you go to berlin and that berlin just got like a really like bright but also a contrast between bright and dark um theme to it more dark themes and then you go to like somewhere like France and it's got like a lot of muted colours, right? Like it's got mute the colours, not bright colours, but kind of muted colours. And then you go to New York and it's kind of got like a yellowish, yellowy orange kind of like look to it, right? It's it, it's it's so wild, so many little intricacies in that world. And even as I say at the beginning of John Wick. They start the beginning by John Wick killing off the actual number one guy of the entire assassin's world. They just start the guy that took his finger while well, the successor, because that guy, you see, they kind of made it that that guy died. Yeah. And he had a new successor. And John Wick just killed that guy off from the beginning of the movie. Let's start the movie off with a bang. <sighs> that movie is absolute quality. Absolute quality. And one thing I will say, quality wise, you have a movie, let's say like Black Adam, absolute garbage. That movie cost like, I think, 200 million, 250 million to make. And it's utter garbage. This movie was, had half that budget. It was like 100 million to make. Or something, 90 million or 100 million, something like that to make, right? And it had better visuals, better story, longer, meaningful, more awesome more emotion just everything this movie is 20 times what black adam is what shazam is but those movies cost double this movie double what this movie cost and it's because you can tell the actor keanu reeves donnie yen the um Director Chad something, and he was like the stuntman in uh, the Matrix movies for Keanu Reeves stuntman, right? That dude cares about this world, dude. He cares, but he doesn't want to stretch it longer than it needs to. When he got a story, he'll tell a story, and when the story's ended, he'll end the story, and that's what they did. And the movie had no waste. I still can't believe it. There was no waste in this movie. It had a beginning, a middle and an end. What? Well, it had an epilogue and a prologue, right? You know, um, like an epilogue. Yeah, prologue, beginning, set everything up. The middle, the characters, the action, the set pieces... And then the final, which was the, the climax. Like when they got to Paris, shit hit the fan when they got to Paris. Oh my goodness. Like the whole movie was awesome. But when they got to Paris, 
they just turned everything up to 10. And they just kept it going. But it still had everything. It had the stunts. It had the cool music. It had all the characters. It had the acting. And then even the final battle. Where they put um, Kane versus um, Wick. John Wick. Donnie Yen's character versus Keanu Reeves' character. And they had to... Um, they had like a duel and they were just shooting each other like take 30 paces and turn around and then shoot and then because they were missing each other and then they turned around and, and then they had to come 20 paces closer and then shoot and then they, sh they did shoot each other and then they had to and this but they still weren't dead so they had to go walk 10 paces and then shoot that was just even that scene was like emotional to watch that you just didn't know what was gonna happen you literally didn't know what was gonna happen i couldn't say yes donnie's character deserved to win to um to survive and john Wick's character deserves to survive and win i don't know what is going on but then if donnie's character wins then you know that goofball over there, like the, I think, and he's got like all the power of the, 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 the table, right? So I don't want Donnie Yen's character to win because of that dude. But I like Donnie Yen's character, and they, Donnie Yen's character, K was godlike. They did not disrespect this character. I can't believe it. They actually brought this character in and he was cool. He was godlike. Oh my god. I am so happy that they didn't disrespect Donnie Yen's character, dude. That he wasn't just fodder. The whole movie, his character was godlike. The kitchen scene. And then he was placing like. Um, it looked like he was placing bombs in the kitchen, but he wasn't. They were just sound um, alarms because he's blind. And it was just so he could know exactly where they are. The fight inside, he was properly blind. Like the way he was blind was awesome. Like, I've never seen a movie where a blind character is blind like that. That is the truth, dude. And it was believable that he's blind, but he can still fight. And he's as good as he is. And then you had another character, the tracker. And he had the dog. And then that character kind of didn't make no sense to me. But within about four minutes of him actually talking... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get this character. I get this character. I understand. He got like in it. He got like. He got like. And then the bit, well, I can't remember that dude. He was the guy from it. I don't know. I can't remember what his name was in the movie. Right? He stabbed him, and he says, um, "It's." He basically said something to him like, "You can either pull the sword, the knife out, and he showed that you're a coward and you ain't worthy and you're a dead man." Or you can remove your hand but leave the sword there, the knife there. So he basically pulled his hand, the knife stabbed into his hand. And he didn't take the knife out and then move his hand. He just moved his hand and it just like, you know, like it was, oh, to watch. Like I couldn't even, I was like, I was, I was literally watching that scene like, oh, 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 like that, right? But then there was the sound of it. Oh, let me not. Right. Yeah. Bro, that movie is 10 out of 10. That is that is the best movie I've watched since Top Gun Maverick. That movie is amazing, dude. Definitely got to go watch that movie. Um, the action, normal. Um, normal 10, 10 out of 10. Peak. Um, if anything, I would say the fight scenes, the, the, the scenes are actually better in this than they were in John Wick Parabellum. 
Yeah, I'd say they were better. Right? There was even like a scene when they were in Paris and he was in a house and then the camera went to a, like an above view. And then, I don't know what it was, but John Wick got like some... He got some space age alien shotgun. I don't know what it was, but it was just firing out some alien technology dude and it was just everyone it just everyone just burst into flames when they got hit and it made like even like a weird sound like it was like a a loud i don't know man like it was like the mix between a shotgun a laser and like a colt for a five going off it was like a it was such a unique sound man and the effect and it looked like what is that game called again um and it's like an above it's like an above um above head camera angle i, I remember what it's called right but there was like it's like it looked like a video game like when you see John Wick just go through all the rooms and just shoot in. And it was all in one take. What a film. They wanted to say, say, this is our last movie. We have got to do something that withstand the test of time. And they did it. With the chases, with the fight scenes, with the character interactions, with the dialogue... That has got multiple layered meanings in it. The brotherhood. Um, the meaning of what loyalty means. What are you fighting for? Just the visuals, the music. Um, Scott Atkins' character was in that movie. And his character was godlike as well. A funny, yes, character was funny. But it was weird to have Scott Atkins' character talking. I don't think I've watched his character in a movie and the character actually talks. And he got talking scenes and he's a good actor. This movie showed me that he's actually a really good actor. And he can do more than just fighting. Man. And he fought John Wick. And even when, because he was actually beating John Wick, actually. Let's be honest about it, right? But the, in the end, when he died, the way he died was funny, dude. Even the way he died was jokes. He fell from the highest spot and then he landed all the way on his head. And the way his body just went... Like that, but he still had like that smile on his face that he had throughout the whole movie. The storytelling just from the facial expressions. I cannot believe we got a movie like this. If I could say there's any movie that is a masterpiece, it's this movie. Because of how much they care. About everything. You could see there wasn't one bit of fluff in this movie. How did they do that? Movies don't normally have that. Right? It actually feels like... Well... I, let me tell a lie. Justice League. The Snyder Cut. That was another movie. That had no fluff in it. That movie had character arcs and it had an overarching story everything meant something and that's the same thing in this movie john wick parabellum so if you want to know you know how i feel like in terms of the storytelling and the pacing if you've watched justice league the snyder cut version this is what this storytelling is comparable to in terms of it's a long movie but everything has purpose everything means something 
Go watch the movie. You'll love it. I'm considering watching it again because that movie needs a second showing. I feel like there's some things that I don't feel like I missed anything, but I know I've missed something because there was so much in that movie. Even in the car chases, when they were in Paris and he was driving around like this. It's like a, 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 like a, a it's a famous landmark in France, in Paris. Because I've seen it before in movies and, you know, on the news and just, I've seen and heard of it, but I can't remember what it's called. But just that scene, and like John Wick was just driving, you could see it was Keanu Reeves driving. And when he was doing like a, basically a donut around this gang, like around the, the assassins that were trying to get him, and the assassins were going in. I think they might have done the longest take with no cuts, just action and shoot that. But literally, my 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 jaw was like, I was like shocked. Like my jaw was on the, was like, like that. Like as I was watching the scene, I had to keep remember, had to keep remembering to blink and like just close my jaw, right? Because I was just like, I realized what I was seeing. I was actually aware. This is what I'm watching one take right now. How are that? How are they doing this? And it was, and that was that weapon as well, that space age laser assault rifle shotgun. I don't know what that weapon is, but warriors, that's my review of John Wick Chapter Four. Absolutely incredible movie. God like pacing. Donnie Yen's character. Actually, well, I, I wouldn't say he beat John Wick's character, but he didn't lose to John Wick's character, but they were both in on it. And they didn't disrespect Donnie Yen's character. There was not one ounce of disrespect. We need more movies like this, man. More movies like this. I support John Wick. But the whole movie, every single time I saw Donnie Yen's character, I'm rooting for Donnie Yen's character. Even when I was looking at it, I just, I don't know why, but I kept on thinking of SPL and Flashpoint. When I was watching this movie, man, even though there was nothing to do with those movies, and it's not just the actor, it was just the stylistic actions of Donnie Yen, and I think it's the fact that he had a cane and just a, like a weapon, and SPL, he did have like a baton, and he used like a sword and stuff like that, you know, and I think maybe that's why... And then the colours were similar to what I, was, I remember from Flashpoint. But there was something nostalgic about watching this movie and just thinking about, you know, movies like SPL. Right. And even Scott Atkins' character did have a suit that was like the same colour theme as Sammo Hong's character in SPL. Which was like, you know, like the, the shirt with like the kind of like crimson purple suit. And he's a big boy, right? So I think it was a stat and yeah. So yeah, that's my review. John Wick, love the movie. Peak, 10 out of 10. Definitely recommend you go watch it. Absolutely no waste in the movie. If you're intimidated by it being two hours and 49 minutes, don't. Because the movie is so good, you are not going to notice it, right? And as I said, I want the extended cut. If the extended cut is 3 hours and 45 minutes, give it to me. I want it. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. If you've watched your movie and you've got something to say, let me know. Comment section. I'll be reading. Let's talk about it. Art right, Warriors, to my next video. Take care. Stay blessed. Catch you later.